Hi everyone, it's Andrew, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to do a transfection of mammalian cells. So I'm here today in the tissue culture room, and the first thing to do uh, is, if the hood isn't open, uh, well then, open the hood up to uh, the correct sash height, which is usually indicated um, on the sides of the hood, and let uh, air circulate in the biosafety cabinet for up to 10 minutes before you start doing any work. I was not the first person here today, so this biosafety cabinet has been on for quite a while. And so all I need to do before starting my work in here is to organize the contents a little bit and also spray all of the uh, exposed surfaces with 70% ethanol. So I'm actually going to these guys. Now you'll notice that I'm stacking all of the items in here to the sides. And that's because the way these cabinets work is they circulate air to create um, a wall of air here that blocks any contaminants that might be floating around outside of the hood from getting in. And the way that happens is by creating airflow that comes out this way and then up through these vents here. So we don't want to block uh, the back of the hood or else uh, you know, we're gonna prevent that wall of air from properly being formed. The second thing that I'm doing is, well, one, being very generous with the 70% ethanol because ethanol is cheap and your experiments are expensive. And the second thing that I did was I soaked this Kim wipe with 70% ethanol. And what I'm actually doing is spreading the ethanol onto all of the surfaces rather than using the Kim wipe to actually soak up the ethanol. And the reason I'm doing this is because the way 70% ethanol works to sterilize surfaces is actually through evaporation. The ethanol dries out any membranes of uh, bacteria or yeast that might be present on the surface of this hood, and it dries out their membranes and lyses those cells, uh, as well as any um, human cells that might be, or mammalian cells that might be lingering on any surfaces in here. So, uh, as I mentioned, we're going to be doing a transfection today. So, what a transfection is, is a method for getting DNA into cells. So this is a very, uh, as you can see from my description, a very broad kind of all encompassing phrase for a method. Um, so to be a little bit more specific, what I'm gonna be doing today is transfecting plasma DNA into HEC 293T cells to produce lentivirus, which I will harvest and use to transduce immune cells later this week. So in these little Eppendorf tubes are my plasma DNA, which were isolated using a mini prep. And you can see that I'm spraying each of these tubes with ethanol before bringing them inside the hood to make sure they're sterile or as sterile as possible. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is actually grab another tube rack because I have a lot of plasmids to transect today. So I'm going to grab one of these tube racks that actually lives in the TC room because this tube rack that I brought from outside uh, has seen a lot of, you know, E. coli and, and other things. And hopefully this rack is here is more sterile, but still I'm being very precautious and um, spraying this down with ethanol very generously. All right, so I'm gonna to continue to gather things that I need to do this transfection. Uh, I'm gonna wait for this rack to dry a little bit. So the first thing is media that I'm going to use to dilute my transfection mixture, which is OptiMem, uh, here we go, which is a, a reduced serum media. 
because uh, serum is known to inhibit transfection mixtures. And then the second thing that I'm grabbing is Fugene, which is my actual transfection reagent. And what Fugene is, is it's a mix of lipids that will encapsulate my DNA and form these little uh, lipid spheres or particles. And these lipid particles will eventually be able to merge with our the cell membranes of our mammalian cells that we're transfecting and deliver the DNA into our cells of interest. And actually, interestingly enough, uh, from my understanding, this, uh, not this exact reagent, but something like it, some sort of a lipid nanoparticle is what's actually used to um, help deliver the mRNA in the uh, COVID vaccines from Moderna and Pfizer into our cells in our body. So we're essentially with the vaccine, uh, transfecting ourselves to make spike protein, which is pretty neat. So um, this Fugene works best when it's at room temperature, which is why I took it out while I do my other steps. And I'm warming up the Optimem in the water bath as well to get that media up to room temperature um, or hopefully 37, but that's not quite as important for the Optimem to be quite up to 37 because, um, yeah, well, it only a very small volume is used. So in the end, it doesn't really matter that much if the media is at temperature or not. So what I'm doing now is I'm getting out a single 1.5 mil Eppendorf tube for every transfection that I'm going to perform, which happens to be 24 today. So I will have 24 tubes out on this track. Four, two, three. Now, if I were feeling uh, very, very careful, what I would now do is label every single one of these tubes with the corresponding plasmid that was going in there. But for the sake of time, instead, I'm just gonna label these plasmids one through 24, or sorry, label the tubes one through 24. And just know that I'll be going in numerical order through all of the plasmids that are in my green rack. Now, the order of operations here is going to be first to transfer a certain amount of plasmid from these tubes into these tubes. Um, it's a certain molecular weight of DNA that uh, we calculate on a spreadsheet. And then after that, I'm going to create a master mix that contains these other two plasmids here that I want to transfect into my cells. And these two plasmids um, actually contain the instructions for the cells to make and package the lentivirus. So we call these the packaging plasmids. And you might hear uh, this plasmid here referred to as the transfer vector. These plasmids here contain the actual cargo that we eventually want our lentivirus to deliver into our cells. So I'm gonna create first tubes that contain my transfer vector, followed by a master mix, add the master mix into my tubes with the transfer vector, and then add the transfection mixture on top of that. Now, the reason you wanna do it in this order of operations is because if you were to add the transfection reagent either to the master mix or to these tubes, then those lipid particles would start to form when you don't have all three of your plasmids in the mixture. And so you might get uh, like uneven mixing of the three plasmids in your lipid particles. And you wouldn't want that because for uh, the production of the lentivirus to work, well, you need all three of those plasmids to be delivered to the same cell together. So what I'm gonna do now is very quickly just pipette the right amount of plasmid from these tubes into these tubes. Um, and uh, we'll fast forward through this part.
All right, we're back. So I finished aliquoting the plasmids into the tubes. And so the next thing I need to do is prepare the master mix. So for that, I'm going to grab the Optimem that I put in the water bath earlier. Spray this down generously with ethanol. Now I'm gonna grab a 15 mil Falcon tube to hold our master mix. Also spray this tube down with ethanol. And then I'm gonna add the requisite amount of both of my transfer vectors. So that's 11.5 microliters of PCMB. As well as 3.3 microliters of PMD. Now it's always a good idea to add the smaller volumes first before adding the larger volume because the addition of the larger volume to the small volumes will help us mix everything together. All right, and then now I need 3.8 mils of Optimum. And this formula always calculates a little bit of excess for us. So mills. Perfect. All right. Now, what I need to do is aliquot this master mix into each of my tubes containing the transfer vectors. I'm just going to give this a few flicks to mix for good measure. Then I will add 150 microliters of master mix to each of these tubes. And here again, the same principle applies of adding in the smaller volume first before adding in the larger volume. So we can fast forward through me filling up the rest of these tubes. All right, so now that we're done with that, I can now add the fugin to start the packaging process or to start the encapsulation process, I guess, I should rather say. So to each one of these tubes, I'm going to add um, nine microliters of fugine, or rather nine microliters of fugine per transfection. Um, I'm just doing one transfection well per tube here. So what I'm gonna do is be very careful with this bottle because this reagent is very expensive. Then add nine microliters at a time each of these tubes and then as soon as I add it I'm gonna flick 15 to 20 times to mix it and let that incubate for 10 minutes so I started at 144 so let's see how long it takes me to finish all 24 of these Something you might notice that I've been doing that I haven't really mentioned is indexing these tubes down by one every time I finish a tube, kind of as a placeholder for me to know uh, what tubes I finished and what tubes I haven't yet. Um, 
just in case I get distracted or lose my place, then I always know what the next tube I'm supposed to add my uh, reagent to. So handy tip, uh, not just in this protocol, but in general. All right, so I'll quickly finish adding fuging to all of these tubes and then I'll be right back. So it's 1.50. I've just finished adding fugine to all of those tubes. So now I can actually get the cells that I was going to transfect. So these were a special kind of HEC 293T cells. Um, they're called LX 293Ts. It's um, kind of like a brand of these cells that have some extra modifications that help them produce even more lentivirus from Takara. Uh, we like these cells. I think they do a good job of producing virus for us. So I'm going to quickly take a look at these under the microscope just to check how the cells are looking as well as the confluency. You want something that's about I think the recommended is somewhere between like 50 to 70 percent confluency on the plate so this looks pretty good and now what I'm gonna do is label each of these wells with the plasmid that is going into that respective well and here I'll actually be a little bit more descriptive about the actual plasmid. So all of my plasmids are starting with the number 44. So I'll just write 44, 16, 17, so on and so forth on these plates. Now all that's left to do is add our mixture of plasmids, optimum, and fugine directly on top of these wells. And we want to do so in a dropwise manner. And you'll see what I mean by that in a second. But first I'm going to set this pipette to 155 microliters. And in fact I just want to pipette out everything in that tube to put on top of each of these wells. Uh, because, you know, we don't want to waste anything that's in there. And uh, when I say dropwise, I just mean that we don't want to squirt out all of the uh, liquid at once because um, these LX cells are adherent. And so we don't want to disturb them off of the bottom of the plate or else the cells will die. And so to make sure we don't disturb the cells off the bottom of the plate, uh, I'm going to very gently add this mixture on top. Uh, second is you don't want to pipette up and down when you are pulling up this mixture because you might disturb those lipid particles that have formed in the last 10 minutes. Um, and yeah, finally you'll see just that, you know, there's all this liquid stuck on the side of the tube. Do your best job to get all of that liquid um, and there might be some stuck in the cap as well. but. At the end of the day, you may not be able to get everything in the tube, and that's okay. Just try not to disturb whatever lipid particles have formed, um, rather than trying to like pipe head up and down and grab every single last drop. So now it's 154, perfect timing, so we can start adding this transfection mix. So here's what I mean by dropwise. You'll see that I'm just releasing a single drop at a time, moving my pipette tip around the well as I do so to hopefully get even distribution of the transfection mixture on top of all of the cells that live in this well. Here's one more time for good measure.
All right, so now let's fast forward through while I finish off the rest of these. All right, so there goes the final tube. Um, and right on time, that was about 10 minutes since I added the fuging to that last tube as well. And so now for a good measure, I'm just gonna give these plates a little swirl, make sure that transfection mixture is evenly distributed. And then I'm going to replace these plates back in the incubator for 48 hours. Uh, let's put it up here actually. After which time I'll come back to harvest the lentivirus out of the supernin of these cells. And there you have it, how to do a transfection. Very easy. All right, see you next time.